my lovely people of YouTube. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. So I am back with my part two of my first luxury haul video of 2021. I know that was a little bit of a teaser and you guys were like, uh, girl, are you really going to leave us hanging? But I am back to show you guys the rest of the uh, fragrances that I picked up that are more in the niche realm. I have actually more than two to show you guys because some of them came in the mail and I am so excited. For the most part, my hauls have been incredible. Like everything that I purchased for 2021 so far, for the most part, I love. There was just one that was kind of like a, ugh. hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys are loving haul videos. I have a couple of them coming your way. Some I purchased with myself, some I did swaps and some were sent to me through company. So lots of haul videos, lots of first impressions and reviews. So definitely leave your comment down below. And if you are absolutely new to this channel, my name is Karina and I would absolutely love if you subscribe to the channel and become a part of this wonderful community because we are so amazing. So the first one here I purchased because one, I am a huge fan of the fragrance house. It's one of my favorite niche fragrance houses. Two, the notes sounded pretty intriguing. Three, the bottle is absolutely stunning. Four, I want every single fragrance in this collection, okay? So I am talking about Parfums de Marley Darcy. Oh, this bottle, it's giving you royal vibes right over here. So pretty, isn't it? So it does have the same structure as all the other female fragrances from Parfums de Marley. I have quite a few of them. My number one love, of course, is Delina. You guys know if you're you know, accustomed to my videos, but Darcy, wow. I mean, all gold metallic with this black tassel. And then there's a little black diamond right at, right at the top here. I have worn this one already because I just couldn't resist and wait to do the video. It is, <laughs> it's one that I had to smell right away. So I'm gonna spray it on the paper and then talk quickly about what I think of this fragrance, which is something that I did see a lot of on Fragrantica. And I completely agree with the people that say this. This is very, very reminiscent of Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. It has that like DNA, that sweetness, that freshness in the opening. It really does remind me of that fragrance. And it reminds me a lot of Armani's C. So it's like a cross between Coco Mademoiselle and Armani C. Like if they were to have a baby, this would be the outcome. So if you like either or, I'm pretty sure you will enjoy this fragrance. Smells a lot better on the skin than on paper. On paper, I'm picking up a little bit of this earthiness to it, but on the skin, it is sweet, but it is definitely more of this elegant sweetness. Out of all of the fragrances that I've tried from Parfums Marley, this is probably the one that I would consider more of a crowd-pleasing scent. It does smell quite like, I wanna say designer fragrance realm, the way they approach fragrances where it's more mass appealing, this is what this smells like. So it's one that you will smell and you'll most likely like it. Again, you gotta like the sweet fragrances. And just based on the notes, you will know that this is sweet. But if you adore Coco Mademoiselle, if you adore Armani C, if you love Dior, Miss Dior, you will enjoy this one. It's definitely in that realm right there. And I do like it. I find the projection on this is beautiful. The lasting ability is really nice. Not as long lasting as my other Parfum de Marley fragrances, I will say that, but it's still a really good amount of wear. And again, I love it for like that girly, sweet kind of day. It's not overly sweet where I think it's just like too juvenile for me. So keep that in mind. It's a really nice scent that you will just enjoy. And a ton of people that are around you are going to enjoy. It's very crowd pleasing. So that is Darcy. Now, when it comes to the price point, this is me being completely honest because you know, that's, what, that's how we do it on this channel. But when it comes to the price point, I do find that because this fragrance reminds me of so many other um, popular 
designer fragrances, I don't find her unique. And so I do find the price point a little high for what you are getting. Now, with that being said, you are purchasing from a niche house. You are experiencing the bottle, the presentation. And so that's why the price point is there. But in terms of just, if I removed all of the names and the presentation and the bottle and just smelt this fragrance, I would most likely say that you can get away with just having Armani C or you can get away with just having Coco Mademoiselle, which is not cheap either, or um, Miss Dior uh, from Dior. That's just me being completely honest. But if you love Parfums de Marly, you love collecting their fragrances, this is a really nice one to add to your collection because they are all quite different from one another. So that's my take on the Darcy from Parfums de Marly. Next up, I'm going to go into a heavy hitter. This was um, complete blind buy. It wasn't even a buy. It was more of like an exchange. So um, I exchanged this for another fragrance that I wasn't personally wearing anymore. This is Maison Francis Kirk de Jean Oud Velvet Mood. And this is the Extrait de Parfum. Now, this bottle is stunning. Oh, stunning. I really wish that Baccarat Rouge had this beautiful plaque instead of the sticker. I do know that the Extrait de Parfums have the plaque over just the Parfum bottle, but I wish all of them would look like that because they're still all very pricey, you know what I mean? This is just a lot more elevated, more luxe. The bottle just looks more exquisite with this plaque over here. Am I right or am I wrong? Now, everyone talks about Oud Satin Mood, and I definitely want to get my nose on that one. I haven't tried it just yet, but this one over here is called Oud Velvet Mood, which is totally different from what I've seen in reviews and what I've seen in also the notes Whew. okay this one is strong oh this one is definitely a unisex fragrance it's very strong very oody it leans to more of a masculine take on the fragrance i'm getting more like oud leathery notes i don't know if there's leather in here i haven't checked out the notes but to me it smells like that there's definitely like this green touch to it also and the oud in this is one of those heavy hitter ouds like you have to really like some ouds that are more towards the animalic vibe which i am not super into this one is definitely coming off a little bit more animalic on paper at least it is very refined and smooth. Like I can tell that this is high quality from smelling it. It's very, very smooth. Definitely has this like satin vibe. It's kind of weird when I say that, but it has a very smooth kind of quality to her, but it is heavy. It's strong. It's animalic. It's oody. Like if you want an oud fragrance, this is the one to go to but again it's one of those animalic type of ouds it's not a soft super wearable oud in my opinion anyways it's one that i have to play around with i'll be honest and say that i'm not in love with the scent i'm in love with the quality you can definitely pick it up on the scent the bottle is absolutely exquisite and i mean it's uh francis kirk de Jean. but the actual fragrance is a little strong for me right now so the next fragrance that I went ahead and got is one that I actually saw Alana Rama talk about which is another youtuber here she does a lot of um, lifestyle and beauty content and she mentioned that this smelled a lot like Tom Ford's ombre ombre leather I think it's called so I went ahead and got this one this is a lot more accessible you can get this at Sephora this brand over here so that's what the box looks like this is a clean brand the packaging, I'm going to be totally honest, not my favorite. It's very, very, very simple, like super minimalistic, but it's not um, an extremely expensive fragrance. And this is the bottle over here. So I went ahead and got leather. I think that's what it is called. And this one is oh, 
it is so similar to ombre leather it's kind of crazy so if you cannot get access to that tom ford or you just don't want to make the splurge because the tom ford one is definitely way more pricey this is coming very very close to that fragrance very close this is your traditional leather fragrance it's oh it opens up fresh and bright but the leather note is already there within seconds it is unisex but on my skin i get this like confident woman type of vibe now i do like leather in my fragrances as long as it's done right and it doesn't smell too manly and for me this one is not coming off super manly so i can definitely pull it off on super cold days it is stunning i wore this outside when it was snowing it was a little bit chilly and it just warmed me up and oh, it's like leathery a little bit tobacco-y spicy there's woodiness in here too it's your perfect winter scent even though there are very heavy bossy like notes in this fragrance something about it has this like freshness to it i don't know what it is but there's something in here that kind of balances out all of those deep dark notes and really rounds this fragrance beautifully but the leather in this fragrance is definitely way more wearable. I don't find it too overbearing and I don't find that it comes off as like a man. Like I don't feel like I smell like a man, you know what I mean? But if you like ombre leather, you will like this one. If you don't want to splurge on ombre leather, get this one. It is really nice and it lasts so long on my skin. I know that they have another one called Rum that I want to get my hands on. It's one that I tested out while I was at Sephora just before the lockdown and it smelled really, really good. But this one is a really nice leather note and I don't have a ton of leather fragrances in my collection when it comes to like the leather being pretty predominant in the fragrance. So I'm glad to have this one. You can also layer this with other fragrances to give it that dark richness that you want well, this one over here was a complete blind buy okay i don't know if i'm gonna love it i'm getting into tube roses and i'm getting really excited trying out different tube rose and this one was a tube rose that i thought i would really like just based on some of the comments on fragrantica and looking up the notes this is more of a vintage fragrance so it was created many 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 years back i'm sure it's been reformulated a couple of times and this is from creed this is tube rose indiana so this is what the box looks like creed i will say i've had my thoughts on creed and i'm starting to kind of get into it i have been playing around with a couple of different scents and with creed you have to be careful not everything is amazing to me not everything is worth the price point but there are key fragrances in their line that i really like and i definitely can appreciate the quality let's spray that again this is completely blind just based off of notes Hmm. okay this one definitely has a vintage quality, just like Coco from Chanel. It kind of is taking me in that realm, but this one is a lot more vintage. It's for sure a white floral fragrance, but I don't feel like it smells extremely old, you know, like it has quality to it. It has sophistication to it, but you have to appreciate fragrances that smell vintage okay i'm just gonna put it out there it is vintage and i am starting to really like certain vintage fragrances for specific occasions when i really want to exude this sophistication i am dressed up really well i feel like vintage scents just take me to another headspace and this one this one's doing that for me is it a love right now i can't say i love it but i do really like it i can appreciate the quality of this scent it's reminded me of chanel's coco for sure not the same coco i find is a little bit more powdery on my skin this one on paper it's not as powdery but it reminds me of coco for sure mm, i'm intrigued honey i'm intrigued yeah it's it's a little zesty and bright in the opening and then just in a few seconds, you're going to get like the white floral vibes. You're going to pick up on some kind of tube rose or 
notes that are combined that give you like a tube rose vibe. It's not sweet on my skin, but it's feminine for sure. It's not sweet, but definitely feminine. Vintage. It's airy, a little creamy on my skin. Ooh, it smells a lot better on the skin than on paper. So that is a good thing. It's more creamy than powdery for sure. Like the Chanel Coco comes off a little bit more powdery. This one's coming off a little bit more creamy. I am still getting this background of some kind of zesty note. It's very faint, but it's there. And I think it's great because it's balancing things off. It's not allowing this fragrance to come off a little too like old fashioned on me. Oh, this is one that I probably wouldn't wear casually. This is something that I would wear when I am really dressed up. Like I'm talking a really nice all black suit or even all white. And you know, I have my jewelry pieces on, my hair is done, I'm going somewhere elegant. This is where I would wear this fragrance. It's not so much of like, I don't know if I would wear this to like an event where it's gonna be like, music like louder music a younger crowd i would wear this more for a dinner out to like a fancy restaurant something a little bit more high class a little bit more fancy this is something that i think would fit the part really well it does have this sophistication to it um again it just makes me it gives me like vintage glamour vibes and this is Oud Wa Vanilla right there. And this is from uh, Bird Doys. Listen, and I have seen this online for a really affordable price, like $77. I've seen it for $80. So it's not like a super expensive um, house, I don't believe. This is a house from France. I was reading a little bit up on it on Fragrantica and they sound like they have some incredible scents. This is part of a collection of like Oudi fragrances. Um, based on the notes, oh, it does have like this little pouch over here, the way it comes. Love that touch. Based on the notes and just like the little reviews that I saw on Fragrantica, it doesn't sound like it's a very strong Oud, which I prefer. And then there is this little card over here that comes in there. Love, love little details like that. Like I just love it when brands really step out the box and give you just like an experience with the fragrance. So the bottle right there looks like that. It's very um, minimalistic, but you know, elegant at the same time, timeless. We have a little pattern here at the back and then the cap there is right there. So let's try this scent. I don't want it just overly sweet. Oh, that atomizer is gorgeous. Whoo! Okay, let me control myself. Oh, yes. Oh, this, this right here is what I'm talking about. A fine vanilla fragrance with character with oomph with depth oh my gosh this smells like real vanilla like vanilla from the the pod it's not artificial vanilla to me at all like i don't know if it's like authentic vanilla in here but it smells like authentic it's not that artificial very airy it's a deeper vanilla I'm getting like a little bit of like this boozy vibe at the same time. Woody notes are in there. It's a little smoky. It is a little spicy. Oh, this is the type of vanilla fragrance that I am all here for. It is stunning. For the price point, I mean, I'm going to say if you love your deeper vanilla scents that have little bit more character to them they're not overly sweet sugar vanilla just get it okay this one this one is a blind buy for you for the lovers of a deeper vanilla this is the one to get right now oh my god i 
love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is going to be probably on repeat many, many, many days of the winter. It's warm. It's spicy. It's vanilla. Like you can really pick up on that vanilla note. It's not coiling. It's not overly sweet. It's just perfection in a bottle. Sophisticated. It's reminding me of something else too, but it's a little, like it reminds me a little of Vani Fatale from Tom Ford. It's a little bit, but this one I find is even more deeper and has a little bit more of this boozy touch. Oh my gosh, does it remind me of Angel Share? Slightly, but this is more smoky. Like I'm getting more smokiness from this one. The woody notes in here too. Oh, the wood, the oud, the oud. I believe it's agar wood in here. I could be wrong, but I think that's what's in here and it is done to perfection. It's not overly done and it's not underdone. It's just like, you know when you get a good piece of steak that's just cooked right? Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So far, this is my favorite. So the last two that I have are from um, Christian Dior. It's from their private line, so I kept it in this haul. I will have a designer um, fragrance haul for you guys very soon. I did split them up. But this one over here, they are decant, so they're not directly from the actual um, boutique which doesn't even ship to Canada, unfortunately. Um, so I find sometimes it's really hard to get these private blends from Dior. I have two over here. I couldn't resist the price that the person was putting it up for. I had to try them out. So these are both 30 mil, which is a really decent size. Um, I have Holy Peony and I have Santal Noir. Now Holy Peony, I didn't really care for much. It was in a bundle so it came with it but Santal Noir that's what I was most excited about because I've heard quite great reviews about Santal Noir so I'm gonna try Holy Peony first I'm expecting it to be fresh floral very wearable kind of spring summer type of vibe I could be wrong but that's what I'm expecting from this one Yeah, this is your fresh, girly, floral scent. A little powdery. It reminds me a lot of La Via Belle, um, Happiness of Flowers, Flowers of Happiness. It, it reminds me of that one, but this one is, it's a lot more powdery than that one. A little spicy. Yeah, it's your... It's your floral fragrance. Um, I'm not crazy about super floral scents, so I'm not like dying over this. It's nice, but it's definitely not um, anything that I would absolutely say get it unless you love your fresh floral fragrances. But for me, it's just an okay fresh floral scent. Santal Noir, this one is what I was most excited about. Um, again, I've heard so many people talk about this scent. It sounds incredible, so let's try this one out. The 30 mil is like a perfect size to just kind of play around before you um, invest in like a full 100 mil or even higher because they do have quite large bottles. I believe they go up to like 250 mil, which is really, really big. Oh. Mm -mm 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 -mm. okay okay wow this smells good <laughs> it smells so good it's really blended nicely that it's hard to pick up on the notes i'm gonna have to try that on the skin because on paper i'm having a hard time picking up the notes to be totally honest but i do like the smell mm, that is elegant so I did go and pull up the notes in this fragrance and it only lists three notes on the website base notes. So there's Turkish Rose, Sandalwood, uh, Amaret Seed, and that is it. Wow, I am really, 
I'm really pleased with the scent. I love how like unique and unusual it is, but it's giving me this very sensual feminine vibe. It is very luxe in my opinion. It's not super dark. Like I feel like you can still pull this off during the day for like brunch or something, but it smells like a very sophisticated woman that's super confident and Oh, I love, love, love how different this one is. Like, I really could not pinpoint the notes. Now that I read that it has Turkish rose, you can slightly pick up on that. You know how I, I, I usually think that Turkish rose smells like a dry rose almost, not like a wet rose, and it's a little spicy. I could be completely wrong, but every time I smell a fragrance where the Turkish rose is predominant, that's the vibe that I'm getting. Something very like dry but spicy and I love that because it doesn't smell like a super bright wet rose done with this video I hope you enjoyed it and saw something new and cool today I will list everything down in the description box my makeup my jewelry and all of the fragrances that I talk about I always list it in the description box I try to leave a little comment also pinned to the top so you guys can have access to the links so check it out if you're interested in anything I can't wait to chat with you guys in the comment section look out for another couple of haul videos coming your way and if you want some exclusive reviews or updates on any of the fragrance that I talked about here leave a comment down below I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you on my next one ciao